Welcome back. So now I'm going to show you one of my favorite uh, numerical linear algebra techniques to compute the SVD. So we've been talking about the, uh, the singular value decomposition. And now I'm going to show you how to compute the randomized singular value decomposition. So if your data actually does have low rank structure, meaning that x can be approximated by only a few columns of u and few columns of sigma from the singular value decomposition, then we can get away with using this randomized linear algebra method, the randomized SVD, to approximate these dominant uh, R columns of U and V much, much more efficiently without actually computing the full SVD of X. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the code. I'm going to show you how the RSVD actually works, and we're going to work this out on an example. Okay, so I think this is kind of a fun example. What we're going to do uh, is load an image of Jupiter. We're going to compute the deterministic SVD, so the full-blown true SVD of X. This is going to take a while, so I might as well get it running. The full uh, deterministic SVD of X. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compute this randomized SVD using an RSVD code that I generated. And we're going to plot the original image, the true SVD reconstruction, and the randomized SVD reconstruction um, those, those three matrix reconstructions to see how good uh, the RSVD is, is doing. Okay, let's see. Okay, good. So I computed the full SVDs that ran. Now we're going to do the reconstruction. We're going to take the first R columns of the true SVD and compute that. And then we're going to get the first R columns of the randomized SVD and build that approximation. And we're going to see how accurate they are. And I chose a target rank of 400 because this image of Jupiter can be well approximated with about 400 rows and columns. Okay, uh, And my original picture of Jupiter um, size of A was a 3200 by uh, 2260 pixel image. So it's this massive, massive, massive uh, picture of Jupiter, very high resolution. I'm going to approximate it with a rank 400 approximation with both the deterministic SVD, which is expensive, and the randomized SVD, which is cheap. And we're going to see how those compare. So running this reconstruction, okay, that's going to take a little bit of time too to multiply all of these rows and columns and recombine into X um, from the, the SVD. And then when that's done, we're going to plot the resulting uh, reconstruction of Jupiter using these three, these three methods. Good. So here we have our reconstruction. And what you have here on the left is um, on the left is the true image. This is the full image of Jupiter. So you can see all this great detail, the great red spot, and the kind of uh, instability region behind it. You can see the deterministic SVD here. This is a rank 400 approximation, the very expensive SVD approximation. Because remember, computing this SVD of a big matrix does, it is expensive. You get away with uh, less data representation after computing it, so you get a compression, but it's expensive to find that compression. And then over here, you see the randomized SVD approximation. And it, again, very, very faithfully captures the, the true structures in the data. So you can't tell the difference between the randomized and the deterministic SVD approximations, except that the randomized SVD was much, much, much faster than the deterministic SVD. Okay? Uh, and I want to just go to the code real quick. So the RSVD code here basically takes uh, the same kind of arguments as the regular SVD. You take the SVD of a matrix X, and you have some target rank R. Okay, We tell it what the target rank is, so that's a little different. And then there are these Q and P factors, which are for power iterations and for oversampling. So Q is the number of uh, power iterations, and P is the oversampling factor. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And so this is all that there is to the RSVD code. It's super simple. <clears throat> you essentially take uh, the data matrix X, you build a random projection matrix P, okay? So um, X times this random projection matrix P, 
basically samples the column space of X. It multiplies and adds up all of those columns in random combinations and makes a skinnier version Z that should have roughly the same column space as X. Okay, so that's what uh, Z equals X times P is. If you have power iterations, then you essentially uh, run through and multiply by X transpose X again and again and again Q times, and that'll decrease, uh, that'll, That'll make the singular values drop off even faster and give you better performance, but at the cost of a few more matrix multiplications. And then once we have this sketched Z matrix, which should have roughly the same column space as X, we compute its QR factorization to get an orthonormal basis Q. We project our data into that orthonormal basis Q to get this little teeny tiny Y. Okay, so we project uh, into Q to get Y. And then we compute the SVD of Y. Y equals U sigma V transpose. These are the Y ones. And the sigma and the V from this SVD are the same as the sigma and V from the original uh, X matrix. And the U modes from our higher dimensional data can be easily combined as Q times these low dimensional U vectors. So really quite a simple algorithm here. Um, only a few lines of code to compute this very fast, efficient, randomized SVD. Uh, my oversampling factor P here, it tells me if I want to sample, normally you sample R columns of X through this random projection matrix. You sample R random projections. So this Z is an N by R matrix. And if you oversample, you might sample an extra five or 10 uh, columns and you get better and better performance. So you actually get rapidly um, faster convergence of this algorithm, even for just a few extra columns in oversampling. Okay, so P and Q are kind of these knobs that you can uh, tune to make your convergence faster. Good. And then uh, going back to the code, I just wanted to show what happens if I take a random matrix X and I compute its SVD. So it'll have a relatively slow singular value drop off. And then I wanna show you what power iterations does to make it uh, have a better roll off of energy. Okay, so I take this big uh, random matrix. It's a, a thousand by a hundred random matrix. So it's, it should be low rank. And what we have here are the uh, singular values at the original data matrix in white. And then what we've done is essentially this power iteration. So for Q equals one to five, we're gonna do one power iteration, then another, then another, then another. And all this means is we take our data matrix uh, X and we multiply it by X transpose times X, Q times, okay? And this oversampling factor, what it does is even after one iteration of this power iteration, the white singular values, which don't decay that quickly, and, and remember the RSVD relies on a fast drop off of your singular value, so there really is a low rank structure. Then even after one application of the power iteration, our singular values are much, 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 much lower, and they drop off much faster. And then iterating again and again and again and again gives you this rapid drop off in your singular value distribution. So this is just a cartoon that shows you how over uh, how power iterations uh, forces your singular value spectrum to look uh, lower rank than it might actually be, so that you could, for example, approximate the first 10 uh, modes more accurately uh, using this method. Okay, so randomized SVD is an extremely efficient uh, and interesting technique to compute this uh, the singular value decomposition when your data does have low rank structure. It's becoming, it's a relatively new technique, uh, but it's becoming a cornerstone of numerical linear algebra right now. So in the future, this is gonna be standard uh, practice if you have low rank data to compute the SVD not through the deterministic method, but through the randomized method. You know, it has tunable error bounds because of, uh, by choice of Q and P, the oversampling factor. And it's really, really easy to code up uh, just a few extra lines of code to get this randomized SVD. Okay, thank you.